What do you think? A shadow of the Earth tree. I mean, this seems to be imperative, in my opinion, considering the sales numbers. If you can even convert 10% of people to buy it, um, that's much more money for you as you in- in inevitably get Elden Ring 2 off the ground behind the scenes. Yeah, this is very exciting. It's not surprising, but that doesn't make it any less exciting. And you don't have to take my word for it as the the Souls fanboy on the show. You can just look online that From Software is best in class when it comes to DLC. The Bloodborne DLC, both Dark Souls 3 DLC. Some people say the Dark Souls 2 DLC is better than the main game. Really, really well done stuff. And what I love about it in particular is that they really go all the way with these DLCs and they're not afraid to put their toughest challenges in the DLC, particularly Dark Souls 3. Uh, some of those fights are really, really tough, but it almost feels it's it's great for people that have already played the main game. Yeah, you graduate you, to it. Yeah, yeah, you graduate to the DLC. This announcement is pretty cool. I I saw the image. I saw people saying that it was already had tons of of lore implications just in that one image alone. As far as what I want from it is, I don't know. It's easy to just say you want more Elden Ring, but there is something to be said about these types of games is that your first experience is always going to be your best because there's that sense of wonder and discovery that you're not going to have the second time. It's the gameplay still going to hold up uh, and, you know, exploring, building your character. That's also going to be there, but you're never going to uh, expand that map for the first time ever again. So that's the thing for me is yeah. that I want this DLC to take place on an entirely different continent. It's okay if it's smaller, uh, but I don't want to know where I am at all. And I don't know what the land holds for me. As far as things I want to see less, I think it would be okay if they don't feel the need for, I guess, filler content, right? Like a million smaller dungeons that have kind of copy and paste bosses. That's something that, I think it's good that it's there for the main experience. I think that that adds a lot of value to people and I don't necessarily see it as a negative, but I think for this DLC that you, you don't necessarily need to keep us around as long, make it all killer with um, amazing locations, amazing bosses, some new characters, new weapons. We don't need to see, uh, you know, 10 uh, very similar copy and paste type dungeons. Just, just give us only the best, even if it's a little shorter. We're OK with that. But Chris, I'm curious what you think, uh, if, if this is something you would dive into, since I know I don't think you you fully finished, but that doesn't mean you can't check out DLC. Yeah, yeah no, I, I got about 100 hours in. I don't remember what level I tapped out at. I feel like it was like in the 70s. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not sure. Maybe 80s. I'm not super sure. I got to go back and check. But I got to um, I, know, I got to this part in, in, in there was like a blizzard. And like there was like a dra- like a, a snow dragon in a blizzard, and I was getting my yeah. ass handed to me. And then I think at that point I was like, I put a hundred hours into this game. I I don't know if I can, <laughs> I don't know if I have it in me to keep going. Uh, but I love Elden Ring. I think it's fantastic. Uh, I think um, I'm any excuse that I have to go back into it and and experience something new, uh, preferably from a a DLC perspective, which I, I I don't have a ton of experience with from software DLC, but I assume is like not not necessarily a fresh perspective, but in some way that feels like I'm starting something new again. Uh, yeah. That's that's kind of what I hope, because the biggest the biggest wall for me getting back in Elden Ring is knowing that my skills have atrophied for sure because I haven't played it in a long time. I'm going to have to jump back into it. And when I jump back into it, I'm going to be at a part that the game assumes I've played for like 90 hours straight, 100 hours straight to get to. It's going to assume very highly of my skills and I'm just going to I'm going to be kind of soft locked. So it would be great to, you know, have a new area to, ex- to explore, like you said, um, new enemies to fight, but also kind of. Um, I don't know, just just something that doesn't something that doesn't feel like I'm jumping into the middle of something, you know, yeah. because that's ultimately my main problem with going back to it. I just like I can't fight this dragon. I could have probably if I may, if I kept going when I was playing, but there was just too much else to play. And it's it's I think I'm probably I'm probably done with the main part of it now, even if I didn't finish it. I think 100 hours is enough time to put into something. Definitely. But 
but I'm super, yeah, I'm, I'm super into it. I, I, I hope it's a new location because the big, the, the most special thing about Elden Ring to me was like the combat was great. I, I loved finding like, you know, different pieces of gear to like customize my guy. Like I, I loved that aspect, but watching that map expand and, and like watching the density of the, of the environment get deeper and deeper and realize like what there's an underside what there's like a floating fucking pet like where where is all the it felt like almost like it felt like a single player mmo that had been running for nine years and you just jumped into it where it's like what is all this content like how is there this much in anything it's crazy it's it's overwhelming and it's amazing um and so hopefully they can deliver something like a, a bit more of a bite-sized um version of that and recapture some of that magic of expanding that map and discovering because that really is the special part of it i think like the combat's great but like that is the sauce that really got me i think and it would be nice to have that again yeah i i remain relatively anti-dlc regardless of the game and regardless of the financial imperative i just feel like just use that energy on the next one you know I know yeah. you want to, I don't even think it's so much about making money on the DLC, although it, obviously it is. It's about getting people to revisit the game, buy it for the first time, get the game of the year edition, the special edition. You have to like give people, they can't sell it again until they put DLC it's, into it. I, I know I'm a little bit um, sensitive to that, but it's true. I kind <laughs> of agree. I, I agree in some way, but I also, I also feel like DLC, I feel like a lot of that is in how you phrase it or how you market it. Like, cause I would. I feel like Spider-Man Miles Morales is DLC. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I think they just sort of like fleshed it out and made it into a full thing, but it's, it's clearly like, it's a lot shorter than the main story. There's not a lot of filler, which is good. Like, I love that, but it's not like Spider-Man Miles Morales. It doesn't feel like a Spider-Man two. You know what I mean? And those, and quite frankly, that Spider-Man PS4 DLC felt like nothing. I didn't even play like, it. I, like it's, yeah. it's, it, it was really, phenomenally underwhelming like i love insomniac and i love th that, that main game is amazing and it, it justifies its, itself as it is but that dlc didn't really feel like dlc at all and i feel like if they just marketed dlc as its own standalone thing i feel like people would be a lot more into it and i feel like it would have less of that kind of tacked on feeling i feel like that's a lot of what because wasn't there an infamous dlc that did something similar or yeah like first light was like a was like a standalone expansion for the yeah, third infamous that's game. That's better to me than that is way cooler and way better than here's a here's a infamous second son DLC, you know? Yeah, Standalone I, I, I get is, that. is always way cooler. I loved that. Life. I loved that expansion for infamous because it was like a, a lot of it was arena combat, which I thought infamous just just made for that kind of thing, like horde mode almost. Yeah, just it's absolutely like perfect for that. And I, I thought I'm softening on infamous three a little, you know, second son over time. I did. I always love the powers, like the neon power. I thought was just so cool. It was just like such a neat idea. But uh, we'll never see more infamous again, unfortunately. I don't think. But you're you're right that that was a nice sweet spot. And I was thinking in my mind actually when you were talking about this because we I've mentioned that when Death Stranding two comes out, whenever that happens, I'd probably play Death Stranding again leading into that. And for some reason, I never considered the fact that I would probably or, or probably should play Spider Man again when right before Spider Man two comes out, especially because I never played the PS five version and I never played the DLC. And they're all together on the PS5 version, so perhaps I can do that leading up to the uh, the release of Spider-Man 2 inevitably later this year, and we'll see that, I think, right before E3. 